Welcome everyone to our virtual studio here in Bergen. Today we will proudly present our new incentives uh, concepts to you and they're all presented by our professional DMCs. First of all, we will start with energetic activities in our UNESCO listed fjords, all led by our DMC Amazing Fjords. Then we will move your taste buds together with Lost in Norway and special invited guests. The third concept are based on sustainability with the DMC April. And the last concept, culture, will be presented by Bergen Convention Bro itself. So just some key facts before we set this off. Bergen are over 950 years old and is the second biggest city in Norway and are often known for easy access to the majestical fjords. Both the fjords and the city itself are listed on the UNESCO heritage list. We also have our own international airport with direct routes to all over Europe and even one route to US. As you can see on the map, our main direct routes to European hubs is to Amsterdam, Copenhagen, London, Frankfurt, Paris, and over 20 flights from Oslo every day. So Bergen is hometown for the world expertise on media, energy, health, seafood and shipping. And therefore we have over very we have over 45 hotels which are of top-notch quality for all needs. I will assure you that Bergen will be a per perfect destination for all your corporate events and incentives. I'm Arve Lindgren and you're watching Bergen Mice TV. Hey, now it's time for some energy. So let's call up my good friend Benedicte from Amazing Fjords. Hi Benedicte, so good to see you. Hello Arve, wonderful to see you too. Where are you now? Well, today I welcome you to the beautiful village of Plom. Uh, we are here in the innermost part of the King of the Fjords, the Sogne Fjord, only two hours away from Bergen. And as you can see, I'm on a ship, and not any kind of ship, I'm on the future of the fjords, very appropriately named so, as it is 100% electric, 100% emission free, and you can cruise in silence through the beautiful fjords. Why is Bergen and the fjords a great destination for adventures? Well, we have adventures everywhere here in the fjords, um, and in um, on your travels, as well as in life in general, I think it's important to use energy and to regain energy. And this is a typical activity where you get energy back from the beautiful nature around you. As I said, it's 100% electric, so you cut out any um, sound of the engine. So in complete silence, you can ride through the fjords and hear nothing but birds and waterfall and the beautiful you're traveling on. And <laughs> Benedicte, so there's so many things we can do in the fjord region. So please name us or show us some of the nature-based experiences. Can you do that? Well, um, actually, uh, I have been experiencing some of the many activities that Plom and the neighboring village of Foss has to offer. So instead of telling you all about it, let me show you. Hello, visit Bergen and hello all of you amazing mice professionals out there looking to Norway for your next incentive or event. My name is Benedicta and I am the sales and marketing manager of Amazing Fjords in the National DMC. We are a family owned company and for this reason I have my husband with me today. Say hello. Hello. And he's going to help me show you some of the great activities that you can do in our energy concept that you can find on Visit Bergen's home pages. Today we're in beautiful Flom. In Flom you have pretty much everything. You have the amazing mountains, you have the fjord, and now in October you have the change of colours. And today we are going to take you on some of the activities here. We are going to start with the iconic Plum Railway, voted the number one train journey in the world by Lonely Planet. Uh, later on, we're going to zip line on Northern Europe's longest zip line. Then we're going to bike down the Plum Valley. 
So hang on, come with me and we'll have a look. Are we ready? Are we sure we're ready? Damn, there we're going. So, I'm getting ready. The reason why I'm wearing a helmet, if anybody uh, wants to know, is not because I'm gonna, it's gonna help if I fall down, but I'm gonna bite cap doors. I've got an audience. And I'm the first one out, so wish me luck. Energized with more than 1.3 kilometers, a drop of 350 meters, and a height difference of 190 meters when you first jump off. It was pretty amazing. And now we're gonna bike.
so before we get to Flum, I'm a bit windswept, but look at this. Is it energizing? Wow. back down in Plum with the train the Treta Bridge with this brand new conference center and then here you get either the ribeye tours of the UNESCO listed fjord the e-mobility cars that you can take up to Stegastan viewpoint a mission free or the <clears throat> electric fjord cruise with the beautiful future of the fjords which you can also can have your conference inside and here comes my boat Now we've seen some fantastic activities in the Bergen region. Uh, I'm here to talk about food and drinks. Um, I think that those are the most important in any incentive trip. Uh, and we have been enjoying drinks, especially beer, all the way since the Viking Age. Uh, so with me today I've uh, got Jens from Syufjell. Hi, welcome. Hi, and thank you. So tell me a bit about uh, what you guys do. You have a craft brewery. So yes. Tell me about what you do and how you do it. Uh, we started the brewery in, in 2014 uh, because there was, uh, in our opinion, there was a, a gaping kind of hole in, in the supply in, in the Bergen area. Mm. Uh, and we got awarded kind of one of the 10 best new breweries in the world in 2014 and started both exporting and selling handcrafted beer on the, uh, on the national and regional scene. Okay. And you work with, uh, I know you've told me that, that you work closely with some of the best restaurants in Bergen. Absolutely, because uh, Bergen has a lot of really good, really dedicated restaurants. And luckily for us, they also care about serving real beer, like actual uh, products that people have taken time and energy to make them as good as they possibly can be. Mm. Uh, so we work very closely with a, a select few of the better restaurants in Bergen and provide them with beer that kind of can help elevate the meal. And uh, I've noticed that you have different brandings and names on, on the beer. Uh, I see one of them, which is an IPA Flöjen. Uh, that's named after one of our mountains. Is it possible to have a taste on that? Absolutely. Uh, Flöjen is our flagship IPA, and it's named after the, uh, one of the two most famous mountains surrounding Bergen. The brewery is, is called Sydfjell, which in English means seven mountains. And then naturally the flagship IPA needs to be named after one of those mountains. So this is a proper old school West Coast IPA. 
6.9% and just plain awesome. Quite the taste on it. It's really good. It's got all, all the malt, all the bitterness. So is it possible for clients to, to come with groups to your brewery? Absolutely. Yeah. We, do, uh, we do tours and tastings almost every day of the week. Okay. Anything from, from small, smaller companies wanting to bring their kind of management groups to, to kickoffs to like bigger, like really established companies who bring anything from, from 30 to 100 people. So we have our own bar in the brewery that can seat about 60 and we do tours from, uh, kind of from raw ingredient through the entire process of making beer and then end up with the Sydfjell tour where we taste uh, seven products from our, our range. I've been on a Sjöfjäll tour before, but that was not the same one. No, it was a hiking trip. <laughs> yes, the one that goes mountain to mountain. Yeah. That's a, a bit more tedious than ours. Ours is very laid back and, uh, and you learn more than kind of, you don't, you don't jog through it. You kind of appreciate all the flavors and tastes. So uh, if you have bigger groups than 60, since you can see it's 60, and let's say you have a group of 120, you can do a split then. Yeah, we so either we split group. them up and do half, uh, half on tour and half on tasting, or we just move everything down in the production area and make uh, long, long rows of tables and uh, kind of where people can sample the beverages between the tanks that make the beverage. Ah, cool. And you're located on uh, about 10 minutes away from the city center, 15? Yeah, it's in Bönes, so 10 to 15 minutes and, uh, and you're there. Yeah, and that's also 10 to 15 minutes away from the airport, so right in between. Indeed. So we could probably take groups either directly from the airport to you and then check in at the hotel or before they leave, actually. So that's pretty cool. No problem. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Now you've seen some uh, of the products you can take your clients to when they are in Bergen. Uh, with me, right after me now, we're going to have two uh, good friends that are uh, pioneers in each of their segment here in Bergen when it comes to food and beverages. Hello, Stig and I, my friend here, has been so lucky to be born in uh, Norway's cap seafood capital. And uh, I representing the third generation seafood restaurant called Cornelius, 25 minutes outside Bergen. And Stig here has um, his uh, famous gin and aquavit produced here in Bergen. And uh, Stig can uh, start telling about his product. Yes, <laughs> we have a distillery just uh, uh, with the airport here in Bergen. Uh, we produce gin and aquavit. And aquavit was actually the first time it was mentioned in the Norwegian history. It was the year 1531 here in Bergen. Uh, we do a gin and aquavit where we focus a lot on using local botanicals and herbs. And uh, we've been quite lucky with that. We are now exporting most of the world and uh, it's a good product. Uh, we do tours at the distillery. Uh, during summertime, it's every day. Uh, beside that, you have to uh, pre-book that. 
and uh, we do groups from two to hundred people, uh, and uh, it's. Uh, Quite the, you, you, we go through the whole production. We start off with the raw material production and then we go into the distillery and the warehouse and it's uh, in the end the tasting of most of our products. So, yeah. Yeah, we receive um, guests coming from um, the gin distillery out to Cornelius and then we are opening shellfish and we, we die for all the shellfish ourselves. Uh, so in a, on a yearly basis, I normally pick myself around 9,000 scallops and five, 6,000 kilos of uh, mussels. And um, we have them live in tanks at the restaurant and we, we show the groups how we open the shell. And uh, <coughs> tell, tell people what's inside. Normally at the restaurant, you only get this round thing in <laughs> the meat, the mussel in a scallop. But here we can tell them about the, um, the gonad that's inside here. The scallop is, um, is a, a hemophrodite, it's a he and his he in the same shell and all these things. And um, we also have a lot of um, clams. In one dive we can pick 200 kilo of this stuff. So it's a lot of things to experience and to learn about the seafood. And uh, if you want to die, we can also arrange that. So it's an, just an, a big experience. Um, and the, the, the diving and the underwater life is extraordinary. So uh, welcome. We will give you a very, very good time. <coughs> and that's the good thing with the uh, shells and seafood. It works perfectly with the uh, gin, though. <laughs> this is the main reason why Bergen is on UNESCO's City of Gastronomy. Oh, good. Sustainability has been a focus for Bergen for generations. And why? The fjords, the sea and the mountains are more than just a beautiful backdrop. The mountains gives us waterfalls that provide clean hydropower and the sea and the fjords serve both as a transport route and a provider of food for several hundred years. This is why we have been focusing on not overutilizing the, these natural resources for a long, long time. So with me in studio, I have Sindra from April DMC. And Sindra, what is your take on CSR and corporate, uh, in corporate travel and also sustainability? Well, um, first of all, it's, um, it's a good thing that we now uh, have, have went from, uh, you know, becoming sustainable uh, and move forward to actually has to put this sustainability uh, that we offer into action. Um, so, uh, what we clearly see is that the uh, request that comes now, uh, and when, when we talk with, uh, with the industry, is that uh, they want to emphasize more on the, the um, emotions rather than just getting the return on the in in investments. So, uh, that means that we need to um, you know, provide different types of programs. Um, luckily, we are uh, situated at a destination and a region which can facilitate for all these uh, kind of elements in order to, to make a program which um, make the end client, um, you know, have the, the right focus that they want to, to, to have on, on the incentive program. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sindra. And just to give you all example of uh, what we are talking about, uh, in Bergen, we focus a lot of green travel, so our light rail is all electric. Our airport is 100% carbon neutral. And 85% of new cars sold are, of course, electric. And 25% of all cars in total are also electric. All taxis will be electric by 2024. And 98% of the electricity is from renewable sources. 1,521 hectares of green area per 100,000 inhabitants in Bergen. And that's a good, that's, that's a lot. Uh, 
And for our own industry, we're talking about 85% of the hotels holds a third-party sustainability certificate, and 90% of the hotels are easily accessible by public transport, and 100% of the Congress venues holds a third-party sustainability certificate. In addition to that, we work with good food waste programs. All activities are nature-based. And Bergen is also in a certification process together with Visit Norway to get a certificate on Bergen as a sustainable destination. So Sindre, back to you. How can, we, how can you incorporate these elements into uh, an incentive program in Bergen and the region? Well, it, it, it's different ways and it has to be, you know, put in context with the the end client, what they want to achieve, and so on. Mm. Um, but the the basic that you always need, like transportation, uh, accommodation, um, is, you know, you just presented, it's, uh, it's uh, all electric, and uh, the accommodation, the hotels, and uh, the, the venues, they are um, certified, meaning that they are really working on keeping the the, the footprint as low as, as possible. Um, the other thing that you could do is, um, and that we see, is that uh, end clients want to somewhat uh, incorporate uh, these kind of elements in terms of playing on the emotion part. Um, it could be waste picking uh, uh, in, in a combination with uh, um, a lunch or educational part where you they can see how we work uh, in this region to to protect the, the environment which is really important for us since we're you know known as uh, powered by nature yeah thank you so much Sindre very interesting and uh, it was a really good pleasure to have you here thank you. so um, folks then we are over with sustainability and now over to culture Before we give you the last concept, which are culture, I would encourage you all to stay with us after this session to go into breakout rooms with the DMCs and Bergen Convention Bureau to get uh, answer to all your questions. So now over to the city of culture and the region Bergen. Did you know that Bergen is home to one of the world's oldest symphony orchestras? Norway's first national theater and has fostered the Nordic region's great comedy poet, Ludwig Holberg. Not to forget Norway's first great landscape painter, Johan Christian Dahl. So we can safely say that Bergen's history as a center for art, music, and literature goes back a long, long time. And we haven't either mentioned Ole Bull or Edvard Grieg yet. Bergen has a wide selection of museums that cover everything from art to history of all kinds. The homes of Edward Grieg and Ole Bull has been turned into museums where concerts are held on a regular basis. This can also be used as a venue for your events. And so, from Grieg to Kaigo to Enslaved, I must tell you a little bit more about the music heritage here. Music has always been an important part of Bergen, and as mentioned, the city has fostered several world-famous composers. If we extend that concept to today's music, then both Kygo and Alan Walker fit into the same category. Two world stars who have really put Bergen back on the map. Bergen has for many years called Europe's metal capital. Why? It's because many of the big bands in the genre have their background in the city. These include Abbath, Immortal, Enslaved, Gorgoroth, and many, many more. The culture is also about people and their values. The term culture covers more than art, music, literature. It's also about values, the mindset of both those who govern the city and the people who live in it. Bergen are, is an open, inclusive city. It has been in our nature as a host for almost a thousand years. It's a city where we look inwards at what we can contribute to others and outwards to see what we can learn from others. A city where we focus on making everyone who visits the city feel like home, but also on how the city is to live in for both locals and people 
who have moved here. So that's why we're now going to show you a broad specter of venues and a little bit good feeling from the city as a culture city. Bergen is the city between the seven mountains and the heart of the fjords of Norway. Many of our unique venues is based on nature with a lot of space and beautiful mountains as a backdrop. Now we're on our way to the top of Bergen's highest mountain, Mount Ulrike. Bergen is one of Europe's oldest port cities and was once a part of the Hanseatic Leagues. Today, you can dine here at classic Bergen restaurants while you learn about life in the medieval ages. Bergenhus Fortress is one of Norway's oldest stone fortifications. It has a long royal history and today it's used for celebrating anniversaries of organizations, companies and international congresses. Bergen is the home of several of Norway's most famous composers, like Harald Severud, Ole Bull and Edvard Grieg. Here at Trollhauen you can experience the home of Edvard Grieg and meet Edvard Grieg in spirit. From one home to another, the Grieg Hall is the home of Bergen Philharmonic Orchestra, one of the world's oldest philharmonic orchestras. It is also an international culture, conference and exhibition center. Kuda is one of the largest museums for art, craft, design and music in the Nordic countries. Here you can experience Edvard Munch, Nikolai Astrup and many more. Kude is a unique venue for small or big events requiring a touch of art. And if space and wellness is your priority, the areas around Bergen has a lot to offer. Here you have both cultural and historical venues like the Heatland Center at Ligra, with an open windswept landscape and you can meet old Norse sheep, explore old food traditions and farming tradition, hiking and fishing. Now to the tones of our famous composer Edvard Grieg, we welcome you.